Hello, I am Hal. How are you? Good, I hope, and in the mood for another chapter of Bandit's Ballads. The 11th, to be exact. Before the action starts, quick recap. Throughout the first 10 episodes, Balon Blacktide went from zero to hero and then developed his skill-o. With his roguery past level 150 and 300k in his 401k, he's now somewhat ready for the big leagues, but uh, not quite. Both his aptitudes and retirement fund could use some fattening up, so let's not waste any more time and get to work. But I have some unfinished business here in Sargot. When chapter 10 came to a close, I said that I spent 7000 on mercenaries, but I actually didn't, so let me correct that. There, I like to call this retroactive truth and this is not the first time I make use of it. I sometimes find myself saying I've done something when I actually did not and then try my best to actually do it before the other person realizes that I've been lying but hey, if it eventually comes true, was it really a lie? Anyway, after I hired these mercs and a few Vlandian volunteers, I set course towards the city of Ortizia, which I'll be using as a sort of center of operations throughout this entire chapter. When I arrived, I made a sale which got me nearly 6,000 dinars, and I spent twice that amount on some mercenary horsemen, which in retrospect wasn't a smart investment. The whole point of my business model is to keep operation costs low, and 12k is anything but. Eh, what's done is done, so let's not dwell on past mistakes and focus on the task at hand. Ortizia is very close to the best ambush spot on the map, which from this day henceforth shall bear the name of Serpent's Maw for obvious reasons. So I shall go there and lie in wait for unsuspecting caravans and when one wanders by, I'll allow it to walk straight into my trap. With a bit of patience and careful maneuvering, I can render its significant speed advantage completely useless. Now if I had a horde of horsemen riding with me, I wouldn't need to rely on such underhanded tactics, but the Kuzeet step is rather far away and by the time I build my horde, caravan raids might have already become obsolete. The first Aserai convoy I caught was approached in the same manner as those in previous chapters, but because this one went so well, I will tell you all about it. So as you know by now, the first thing I always do is selling my loot to the traders. The reason I do this is because after each attack, I can take a lot more cargo than money, so by selling my loot, I directly increase the profitability of my raids. You already knew this, but there's a reason I'm repeating it for the 15th time, you'll see why when the time comes. For now, let's see how the invasion went. To be honest, I did not change much from my previous attack, which itself was the perfected result of several months of research into the field of raidology. Just like last time, my men were arranged in their standard formations, with the infantry and rangers holding their ground and awaiting further instructions. Unlike last time, and to the suggestion of one of my men, the riders were split in two separate groups, one of which would follow me, striking out at whoever comes near, while the other would let loose on the enemy's horsemen whenever they break away from the rest of their crew. It's obvious that my lads can't figure that out on their own, it's up to me to tell them when to charge and when to pull back, because I don't want them laying a finger on the bowmen until their cavalry is dealt with. As you might already know, the goal is to break the morale of the armed traders and make them flee so that we may attack the survivors one more time or preferably rob them. But if their horsemen are still on the field, we run the risk of killing the armed archers to the last man and if that happens, we lose out on a lot of potential loot. To put it another way, the attack has two phases. Phase 1, obliterate their cavalry and phase 2, break the archers morale and let them escape. From this day onwards, this method shall be known as the standard procedure for caravan raids. And even though my primary duty is to micromanage the troops, I refuse to leave all the fighting to them. What kind of leader would I be if I did not get my hands dirty? I have to say, I did not expect to be so effective. I mean, I can easily slaughter dozens of peasants or looters in a single fight, but professional soldiers? They're a bit harder to deal with and yet, I've made short work of them in this raid. I even scored a double kill, which is a first for me in the context of an actual battle because usually, my spear has trouble penetrating the enemy's armor, but this Mameluke lance I stole in one of my raids is doing a really good job. It can be wielded with a shield, it can be couched to deal devastating damage, 
and its point can pierce armor even without a horse's speed advantage. In my younger years I preferred to use axes but now that I've grown old and lazy it's a bit more comfortable to just sit on a horse and poke the enemy from out of arm's reach. Many Aserai skulls were pierced on this day, they better start calling me Balon the Impaler and now that I think about it, I should focus more on training my lancer skills. And when I didn't kill, I inflicted grievous wounds on my opponents which left them at the mercy of my men. Pointless to say that mercy does not exist in ironborn vernacular. After a few minutes, most of the cavalry has been devastated and my footmen were brought closer to the armed traders. Those poor sods desperately tried shooting at us, but I had a little bit more firepower. Combined with a ravaging cavalry charge, it was enough to kill 90% of the traders in a matter of seconds, which shattered enemy morale and sent five of them running for their lives. It's possible that more of them tried to make their escape, but by the time I ordered my men to disengage, some of the would-be runners might have already been slain. But in spite of my order to cease the hostilities, a few of my horsemen continued to pursue the fleeing traders, so I had to be more clear in my instructions and told them to move well away from our victims. And just like that, in the span of 5 minutes and 36 seconds, I have managed to pull off yet another successful caravan raid, although this came at a heavy cost. 13 of my riders have perished in this fight. Considering I had 62 when the attack began, that's a 21% fatality rate which would be terrible if the loot wasn't so great. I won't talk too much about what we took because you already know I've gotten 50% of the total cargo, which includes the stuff I sold prior to the attack. But even more important than the plunder was the roguery experience. I may have already evolved this skill to an acceptable level, but it can always be better. If I had to rely on prison breaks to get it done, I wouldn't even have bothered, but since raiding contributes to my personal development and is making me rich, I don't see why not. After we claimed the loot, we've chased the 5 SKPs and made them an offer they couldn't refuse. This robbery earned me the other half of their cargo and a lot of Sumter horses, most of which were actually sold to the traders by me, cause I didn't have anything else to give them in exchange for their cash. Now that I think about it, I should not do this again, because if the attack didn't result in a robbery, this would have been a waste of money. After that, I went back to Ortizia to get rid of the prisoners and horses that were slowing me down. There was some money in it, but most importantly, I regained my speed so I was now ready for more caravan raids. A lot more. So many in fact that I suspect you'll get sick and tired of hearing me speak about them, but I have to. Because all these raids actually taught me something very important and I want to share that lesson with you. Step by step. Just like how I learned it. Anyway, as I awaited my next batch of victims, the merchants I previously robbed were caught by a group of looters. Unfortunately for these criminals, those were my cows and only I get to milk them. But the caravan was gone in an instant, never to be robbed again. So the only thing I could do was vanquish the thieves and release the three traders who survived their onslaught. These lads now had nothing. They could continue being nothing, but they actually cursed at their former profession and offered to join my warband. At least with me, they can actually make something of themselves. Reminds me of why I came to Calradia in the first place. Well, attacking their convoy took a heavy toll on my troops and I have plenty of room in my gang. I could use some replacements. After that, we went back to the Serpent's Maw, caught another Aserai caravan and approached it using the standard procedure. This fight was almost as good as the previous one and I managed to kill six enemies, some in a rather clever manner. But I believe we've talked about plenty of caravan raids throughout the chapters, so I won't describe this one in great detail because to be quite honest, it wasn't much different. I do have to mention that this one also resulted in a robbery which got us 100% of the money and cargo, among which I found an Aserai horse which is one of the fastest mounts in the world. I claimed that one for myself because I often find it difficult to keep up with the desert riders. 
After this robbery, I was going to return to my operations center to restore my party's traveling speed, but I already had victims nearby, so I attempted to catch them. My attempts were successful, and before long, two other caravans have fallen to my raiders. The fights, once again, were impressive, and I managed to score nine kills in each of them, but even though I followed protocol to the letter, they both failed to result in a robbery, because nobody wanted to run and save themselves. I doubt I can optimize my methods any further. Sometimes you're just not meant to win, so you gotta accept it and move on. This is a bit problematic, however, because if I don't at least manage a double tap, 50% of the equipment I sell is just gone, reduced to atoms. And since the caravan pays pennies on the dollar, that's quite a big hit to my earnings because the 10k I swindle from the traveling merchants is but a fraction of the gear's total value. So yeah, to sell or not to sell, that is the question. Either way, I end up losing potential earnings. I just have to figure out what I mind losing more. But why don't I focus on what I am earning, namely skill points? After the last three raids, my scoundrel skill was already at 204 and I could now access an ability that boosts my damage with civilian weapons. Not sure this will be of any help on the battlefield, but I reckon it's good to have for special situations. After all the fighting, plundering and philosophizing, I traveled back to HQ to sell my spoils of war. Trade goods brought me 9000, sl I mean prisoners fetched 8.5k, and surprise surprise, one of the artisans wanted me to break the law, which means I can sell my looted weapons and armor for a decent price. 25k in total. Considering this is merchant gear, which isn't exactly top of the line, that is a pretty decent payout. Before I departed, I also paid a visit to the Lord's Keep, because he had a job for me. Break a few peasants' legs and collect some taxes. I wouldn't bother running this mission, but Archon Apis is cut from the same soiled cloth as me, and I think we could be good pals if I put in a bit of effort. But I had another job to do, with an earlier expiry date, so I traveled towards the Vlandian city of Charas, recruiting replacements from whichever settlements were in my path, and once I got there, I finished the job and got paid a pathetic amount of money. However, we have to take into consideration that the real reward was the price increase of the gear I just sold, and that was worth it. And let's get this straight, now. I am not a charitable man, but I gave my word to the artisan that his goods will be delivered on time. I do not care one iota for helping others, but all I have in this world is my balls and my word, and I don't break them for no one, you understand? I say I do something, I fucking do it, no matter how little it pays. Take Bandit's Ballads, for example. A smarter man would have put this series out of its misery after chapter 5, yet here we are at episode 11, with the end still rather far away. It would pay a lot better if everyone who enjoyed these videos actually pressed this button, but even if they don't, it is my obligation to see this through to the end. How's that for a shameless plug? Smooth, wasn't it? Just like you will be with the help of today's sponsor, Mansk. Actually, no, the video is not sponsored, but if it was, this would be a hell of a transition if you also take into account the Scarface quote from earlier. But let's get back to Balon's adventure. So, where were we? Ah, yeah, completing jobs for a measly amount of coin. After I delivered the goods to Bezwinda the mouse, this crime boss let me know that she also had a matter I could assist her with. Some other gang is encroaching on her territory and she could use a bit of help in dealing with them. Because I was busy with other endeavors, I allowed Pissman to handle this job in my name. He's the second best rogue in our gang. While he and the lads I gave him would deal with the thugs in Charas, I ran back south to my favorite town, but in my path, an Aserai caravan. Because I had no loot to sell to the merchants, I had no incentive to raid them according to standard procedure, so I ordered everyone to charge, and even though the attack was lightning fast, one of the traders actually lost his nerve and ran away, which resulted in a robbery. But despite our success, it felt like something was missing. 
Whatever it is, we'll figure it out. For now, I had to take a detour and stop by Sargoth to sell some of the cargo I've just stolen, which brought me a little over 12k. When I was done, I resumed my initial course, but mere moments later, a Sturgeon caravan was unlucky enough to cross my path. The raid was handled in the exact same manner as the previous one. Everyone charged, a couple of the traders got scared and ran away, and then they got robbed and gave me everything they had, including the coin which was a bit over 9,000. But once again, something's missing and I don't know what. Guess we'll see. Eventually, I arrived to Artesia, and when I did, I immediately went to work. Those taxes aren't going to collect themselves. The first village was a bit short on cash, and the locals offered to give me some of the silver ore they just mined, which I gladly accepted. The next two had their own share of problems, and because I wanted to get back to raiding caravans, I actually exempted them from further taxation. Because of my act of kindness, the locals actually took a liking to me and offered me access to more of their available troops. Most of them are basic recruits, but a lot of iron-born blood has been spilled on our raids, and we could use some replacements. Once I got the money, I went into town and gave Lord Apis his cut, which concluded the mission and further improved our relationship. I think this fellow is someone I could depend on in the future. Shall I ever need to enlist a nobleman into my ever-expanding organization? For now I need to do it on a smaller scale, by recruiting a few more soldiers. So I decided to pay a visit to the desert and conscript some Aserai lads, but just as I was about to cross over, a Kuzeit trade convoy found itself facing my raiding party. Big mistake. It was faster than me and the merchants could have escaped, but they made an even bigger mistake and walked straight into the Serpent's Maw, where I easily caught them. Because I wasn't in the mood for fighting, I sent my men to deal with the caravaneers and when it was all done, they brought me my share of the loot. It was a bit light, but good enough, considering I put in zero effort. But uh, where's my roguery experience? I didn't get any, is it because I auto-resolved the fight? My skill is barely at 205 and 3 caravans ago it was at 204. Is this what was missing from my prior raids? Why? What do they all have in common? We'll seek answers after we raid a couple more and try to establish a pattern. After I returned to Ortesia to lighten my load, I ran into a Sturgeon caravan which was subjected to the exact same treatment as the Kuzeet one, and to no one's surprise, it had the same result. Now, the one thing that all of my recent raids have in common is that I never bothered to sell them anything. Hmm, that could explain the sudden drop in experience. Only way to find out is to catch another caravan and make a sale to see if that makes any difference. Eventually, we ran into a group of merchants hailing from the Southern Empire and I went back to my old ways, sold them some loot, entered the fray and attempted to attack them according to standard procedure. My attempt was unsuccessful because as soon as I got close to the mounted crossbowmen, they shot my arms and legs full of bolts and I passed out from the pain. Since I was in no condition to give orders, my soldiers had to carry the rest of the fight on their shoulders. Unfortunately, these boys still haven't learned anything after all our raids together and did not manage to leave any survivors. I must say, I am disappointed. Because these traders got deleted in the first strike, there was no way to retrieve the rest of the gear I just sold them, which is worth a lot more than their gold, but there was a silver lining. My criminal expertise began to increase once more. So basically I have a simple choice to make. I either risk losing half the gear I sell, or I stop developing my skill altogether. Well, at least if I sell the stuff, there's a chance I'll get it back, so from now on, I shall take that risk. After offloading some of my goods in Ortesia, I prepared to go on that conscription spree, but just as I walked out the city's gates, another trader convoy dared to enter my presence, and it had to be punished. So I made a sale, killed everyone in the first attack, despite trying my hardest not to, and got exactly the kind of loot I was expecting. But even better, my roguery went up. Alright, so this pretty much confirms my theory. Raiding on its own is not enough to develop the skill. You must also swindle the merchants into buying your gear and then take it back by force. A bit retarded if you ask me, but what can we do? Maybe we can do even better than this. 
One of my soldiers gave me an idea, but in order to implement it, I need to go to a hostile village. Earlier I attempted to go into Aserai territory, but I got distracted not once, but twice. So let me resume my course, but uh... Wha oh Another caravan? You know the drill. It's been drilled into your brains dozens of times by now. And before you ask, no, it did not result in a robbery. I don't care anymore if I lose the gear, so be it. Skill is more important. After all those distractions, my gang finally managed to cross over into the desert. And without hesitation, we headed straight towards the fishing village of Tobilis. When I forced the locals to give me recruits, they realized that resistance is futile and didn't even attempt to defend themselves. The soldiers I took from here were very impressive. Nine horsemen who would boost my party's traveling speed. But after rounding them up, my stay in the desert was cut short by Nukar, a local lord whose warband was more numerous than mine. If it wasn't, I might have attempted to fight him, but that would have spelled my doom, because the Sultan himself was nearby, as well as two other lords. I have to thank Nukar for indirectly telling me to get out of here before it's too late. The only place to go from here was back to HQ, but as I was retreating, the Aserai lords kept pursuing. When I arrived to my safe space, I realized that my scouting skill has developed, and the new ability that I've unlocked would allow me to wade through the dunes at a faster pace. It's not enough to keep up with the sand people, but every little boost to my mobility helps. Out of curiosity, I wanted to return to the desert and test this new ability out. But Arwa's 115 soldiers blocked my path. Because I was pretty sure I could handle them in battle, I went towards her party and tried to pull them farther away from the desert, but as I did, Unkid's warband showed up and I had to abort this mission. And if that wasn't enough, Arwa's cousin, Tariq, also came out of nowhere and now I really had to bolt. But I was determined to fight one of these guys and just as Tariq broke away from the others, I went behind him and forced him to flee deeper into the continent. When I caught him, I came to the realization that his 100 men were just as strong as my 127, and I decided to keep pursuing him and recruit people from whichever villages we pass through. By the time I caught him, I've gathered 9 more lads, and this was the best I could master. I hope 136 of us are enough to deal with him. This battle would be waged like all the others thus far. Shields in front, archers in back, and so on and so on. You know, from now on you can assume that this is the standard formation I'll be using in all of my fights, unless I tell you otherwise. In all honesty, I would not say that this encounter was a perfect display of tactical brilliance, because it was pretty straightforward. Tariq's first move was to position his troops to our left in an attempt to flank us, but my lads simply turned to face them and assumed a defensive position in front of the tree line, which would hinder the enemy's incoming cavalry charge. Then, because there archers were a bit separated from the infantry, I went with my riders to attack the gaps. But our opponents were quick to patch that hole in their security and we were forced to pull back. When I realized that our footmen were being pestered by Tariq's cavalry, me and the boys rode back to their defense. My spear did a pretty good job, but these Aserai fellows were equipped with some sturdy armor. I had to poke this Faris about four times in order to calm him down. Rather inhumane if you ask me. Shortly after that, I scored another double kill with the spear, but my axe was getting really thirsty for blood and I just had to satiate it. This weapon is a bit small to be used from horse back, but even so, its heavy damage more than compensates for its shortcomings and I've uh, buried the hatchet into the spines of two of these Fremen warriors before I decided to switch back to the lance and rush towards their rangers. This was a brutal charge which resulted into a frontal lobotomy as the momentum carried me forward another 10 meters behind enemy lines at which point I chose to dismount and engage them on foot. This has always been a bad idea which usually ends with me getting colandered but this time things would be different. For the most part, I've handled myself rather well, taking down another two enemies when my horsemen didn't block me. 
but I quickly found myself surrounded and unable to strike back. In order to survive, I had to play defensively and wait for my men to do their job. It didn't take long for the remaining Serenids to fall, one by one, to my axe and to my men, and when the last enemy was slain, my men celebrated in unison, their shouts announcing our victory. But not all of us could celebrate, for this triumph was purchased with rivers of ironborn blood. Fifty of our warriors have fallen, and another forty-two sustained serious injuries and would be unable to fight for a while. Was it worth it? It probably was. I didn't obtain any special equipment for myself, but at first glance, the loot I did get is worth about 10,000 dinars, maybe more if I know where to sell it. I also captured the 33 survivors, and since they're professional soldiers, I reckon the ransom broker will pay a pretty penny for them. As for Tariq himself, I set him free because his clan is rather strong and maybe I can recruit him in my kingdom, if I live long enough to establish one. As I was returning to HQ, I noticed an Archon of the Northern Empire laying waste to a village. But because my depleted forces were in no condition to fight him, I gave his party a wide berth. Until the Western Emperor himself showed up to protect his domain, and ambushed the Northerner along with a few of his underlings. Because I saw an opportunity for some easy money, I decided to join them in the attack. Only three of my men perished, and for very little effort, I claimed a quarter of the total winnings, which I estimate to be worth around 5,000 dinars. With no further incident, I safely arrived to Artesia, sold whatever I could, and prepared to bring today's goals to fruition. It shouldn't take much longer. First, I needed to restore my party to full force, so we paid a visit to a few villages and recruited whoever was available. Then we were going to return to the desert and forcefully conscript a few more lads from there, but just as we were about to cross, a caravan showed up. Ah, that's a classic. I won't draw it out. The convoy was pushed into the Serpent's Maw. I convinced the merchants that I come in peace and that I only needed someone to sell my loot to. They bought it, both the lie and my plunder, and then I attacked them according to Ironborn standard procedure. None of them tried to escape, so we neither double tapped nor robbed the caravan. Half my stuff was gone, but my rogue skill reached a new level, which allows me to get paid even better for the weapons I sell. And because I've become a certified arms dealer, the battles waged from now on will be as profitable as they're going to get, and will probably become my main source of income. One objective reached, one more to go. I just want to sell my spoils of war into a town that'll pay a good price for them. As you know, any town is capable of paying me my fair share, but first, I must remind the locals who I am by committing a misdemeanor at the very least. So I paid a visit to Artesia one last time, but there was no opportunity for crime in there, so then I went to Lagetta, but uh, same thing. Then I was going to visit the Batanian cities, since they're closely packed together, but along the way, I got distracted by a passing caravan which I attempted to chase, but to no avail. By the time I reached the imperial city of Rote, I gave up the chase and went inside to see if this is the town where I'll finally offload my plunder. Nope. After this, I went to Jalmaris and Zeonica, where nobody needed me to break any laws. And because I was getting desperate, I tried to intimidate a few peasants into giving me some of the stuff they're carrying, but they just laughed in my face, <laughs> daring me to attack them. I could, but that would make my final objective a lot more difficult to achieve. So I let them go and set course towards Poros, conscripting villagers from whatever settlements I passed through. In my travels, I also ran into a South Imperial Lord, whose soldiers were effortlessly slain by my raiders. And when I got to Poros, still no opportunity to commit a crime. But I did find a criminal, a very skilled one at that, Athrar the Prince. He is a bit malformed, but handsomeness is the least of my concerns. He's skilled with a blade, and even better, he's good at breaking the law and living to talk about it. So I gave him a sign-up bonus, and then we set off in search of that mystical town where someone needs me to cause a bit of mischief. 
My travels pushed me deep into South Imperial territory, where my frustration caused me to attack a few peasant parties. If they gave me their loot, all would have been good for them, but they all played tough, so I put them to the sword. No questions asked. Flowing blood does miracles to soothe my anger, and once my mind was clear, I set course towards Amitatis. Needless to say, every hostile village that was in my path got an unexpected visit, which wasn't very pleasant, and once I finally reached my destination, I've spotted another northern imperial getting attacked by his western cousins, so I joined in and got nearly half the plunder for doing Jack Diddley squat. To my surprise, in this useless pile of loot, I actually found a helmet that was sturdier than the one I was wearing. I'm a big fan of being alive, and protecting your noggin is one of the best ways of staying that way, so I did not hesitate to put it on my head. It's still a bit sweaty and bloody from the last bloke who was wearing it, but it's nothing us Ironborn can't handle. As for the helmet I've worn before, that was given to my newest companion, alongside a few more looted pieces of equipment. But once we were done with all of that, we finally walked through the gates of Amitatis and asked around town if anyone needs an unscrupulous fellow like me to get his hands dirty on their behalf. Surprisingly, someone did need help. Another artisan trying to sell his goods in another town. You know how this story goes, we've already been through it twice. After accepting the job, my infamy in the Western Empire grew, and I could now get paid a decent amount of money for the stuff I wanted to sell. When I first walked into the market, the merchants offered to pay 32,000 dinars for the weapons I brought, and when I added the armor to the mix, the total value increased to over 90,000. But they did not have that much coin lying around, so I would have to visit another town to get rid of all my stuff. However, I was not yet ready to make a sale because my arms dealing license wasn't yet official. I kept it that way to see if the difference it makes is worth all the trouble I went through for the past couple of months. When I went back to the market, I flashed my newly obtained license to the traders and now they offered 41,000 for the same weapons that were previously worth only 32k. I'm not very good at math, but if my calculations are correct, their value has increased by almost a third. Alright, that was worth the effort and from now on, I shall focus less on raiding merchants and more on hunting lords. Because I knew they couldn't afford it, I did not offer to sell them all the armor I was carrying, I just gave them bits and pieces until their entire coin was lining my pockets. But I still had loot to sell and because I also had a job to do, I went back to Zeonica to put both these issues to rest and call it a day. The job itself paid a little over a thousand, which isn't even worth mentioning, but when I went to the market, the armor fetched 31k. And that's not the only thing I sold here. Saddles, jewelry, pottery and a few other trade goods were also exchanged with cold hard cash, bringing the total value of this transaction to nearly 47 grand. Once we closed the deal, I came to the realization that I've also achieved the second goal for the day, surpassing the half a million mark. 566 thousand dinars to be precise. That's the sum of money that I put together in my retirement fund. I am not a millionaire yet, but I'm more than halfway there, and I've got the skill to make even more money, and with this chapter's goals now achieved, I now have a solid foundation upon which to build my criminal kingdom. A lot more violence is needed to achieve that objective, but we'll leave it for the next episode of Bandit's Ballads, because this one must come to an end. I hope you've enjoyed it, if you did, make sure you do the thing. Thanks for watching and goodbye.